In this unit, we're going to complete uh, the description and the specification of the Heck machine language. So, once again, the overall context is that we have a, a hardware platform consisting of a instruction memory, CPU, and a data memory, and we have a machine language consisting of A instructions and C instructions. We described these instructions in the previous unit, and a Heck program is a sequence of such uh, instructions uh, batched uh, together, and we execute them one at a time. That's, that's the overall uh, picture. Now, as it turns out, and this is true for every uh, machine language uh, uh, out there, you can write programs in machine language using two different flavors, or two different languages, if you will. You can write them symbolically, using uh, mnemonics and uh, friendly uh, symbols, and that's what we see here on the left-hand side, at, at the bottom of the slide, or you can write them using agreed-upon binary codes. Now, if you write programs symbolically, you need someone to translate these programs from symbols to uh, binary code. And once you do this, once the program is uh, uh, specified in, in binary codes, you can actually take this code, load it into the computer, and actually execute the code on the computer. Now, we're going to spend a whole week talking about this uh, translation and about a very special program called an assembler. So I'm not going to spend too much time uh, uh, discussing the uh, translation process, but I just want you to know that it's a challenge that has to be uh, met uh, somewhere when you build this uh, computer. So here is the uh, symbolic and binary uh, syntax of the A instruction. Well, the symbolic syntax is something that we've seen uh, before at a uh, certain value. And uh, this value can be either a number which is at most uh, uh, 2 raised to the power of 15 minus 1. You may be wondering uh, uh, where this number comes from, and you'll see it in just a minute. Or it may be a symbol which refers to such number, and we're going to defer the discussion of symbols uh, to a later unit. Uh, for example, at 21. So here's the same instruction in, uh, in its binary flavor. We begin with a special code 0, which tells the computer that this is an A instruction. And then we specify the same value that we had in the symbolic instruction, but we specify it using binary code. So altogether, we get something like uh, this example here. Uh, once again, the first zero is sometimes called uh, an opcode, an operation code. And then come 15 bits that represent the value that we want to load into the A register. And it so happens that uh, hopefully 10101 is uh, the same as 21 in binary. What about uh, the C instruction? Well, the C instruction, as you recall, uh, the symbolic definition of the C instruction is very user-friendly. We have a computation which we can uh, store in a certain destination. We have an optional jump directive, and that's, that's the great benefit of uh, uh, symbolic expression. If we want to express it uh, in binary, then we have to decide on some agreed-upon codes, and uh, uh, Norm and I have already done that when we uh, designed this language. So here is the 16-bit specification of the same symbolic instruction. The first one is an opcode. It tells the computer that this is a C instruction. If you recall, we have only two types of instruction, A instruction and C instruction, and that's why we need uh, only one code or one bit to represent the opcode, which is either 0 or 1. So one opcode means this is a, a C instruction. Then we have two bits which we don't use. We don't need them, and by convention, we set them to 1. The next seven bits taken together uh, specify what is the computation that I want to achieve. Uh, these are the control bits that will be sent later on to the ALU and will uh, tell the ALU which uh, uh, computation it has to, uh, to carry out. The next three bits represent the destination, and finally, uh, the last three bits re represent the jump condition uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, we code uh, symbolically um, using the word jump. So this is the uh, uh, sort of the different fields of the instruction in its uh, binary flavor. So let us uh, discuss now the uh, mapping between the, uh, uh, the symbolic expression of the C instruction and the uh, binary expression of, uh, of the same instruction. Let us begin with a, with a comp field. So here's a table that relates 
the uh, symbolic uh, uh, computation mnemonic to their binary equivalents. Uh, what we see on the left-hand side is the, is the symbols, and on the right-hand side we see uh, the binary codes, and we also have the A bit uh, uh, that you can see at the bottom of the table. So, uh, for example, suppose that uh, the computation is D plus 1. You know, symbolically, we want to cause the computer to compute D plus 1. Well, we look up uh, the table, we see uh, the D plus 1 somewhere in the middle of the table, and we see that the D plus 1 is listed in the column uh, where A equals 0. So we know that the A bit should be 0. Then uh, we look up uh, the rest of uh, the row in this table, and we see that the C bits should be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So that's it. That's how we represent the operation D plus 1 in binary. It's 0, 0, 0, or whatever it is. I don't want to make a mistake. You just uh, look up the table and uh, you have it. So that's how you map from symbols to, uh, uh, to binary codes. Okay, moving along, let's talk about the uh, uh, destination field. A very similar idea. We have a mapping that gives you the uh, uh, symbolic uh, mnemonics on the left-hand side, and in the next column you have their uh, binary code equivalents, which uh, very conveniently range from 000 to 111, because we have eight different possible destinations. So once again, if someone gives you a particular destination like MD, you look it up in the table, and immediately you see that it relates to the binary code, in this example, 011. So that's how you can translate from symbols to, uh, to binary code if you have to. All right, finally, uh, let us focus on, uh, on the jump uh, field, almost the same as the destination. Uh, we have exactly the same concept. We have uh, the mnemonics uh, on the left-hand side, and we have uh, eight different uh, uh, possible uh, binary combinations uh, in the next column. Once again, conveniently enough, we have eight different uh, uh, jump uh, conditions, and, uh, and therefore the, uh, their binary equivalents, uh, conveniently enough, range from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. So that's it. This basically uh, uh, sums up the, uh, um, the mapping between the symbols and the binary codes. If we want to put it all together, uh, we can do it in, uh, in one slide, and uh, this is a complete specification of the C instruction in all its glory, uh, both in the uh, symbolic rendition and in the, uh, in the binary rendition. And if you had to write a computer program to, uh, uh, to translate from one language to the other, you can begin to see uh, how you can use this logic in order to write uh, this program. And by the way, this is something that we are going to do uh, in the last week uh, of this course. So, now that we understand uh, how the uh, uh, specific instructions uh, look like in both uh, binary and symbolic, uh, let's move on and talk about the overall concept of a hack program. Here's an example of a hack program. Uh, at this level of the course, you don't have to understand the program. We are just giving you uh, uh, a first overview of how a program looks like, and we can make some, some quick observations. You know, first of all, a hack program is a sequence of hack instructions. This program is written using uh, symbolic instructions. Uh, white space is uh, permitted. You can throw in um, empty lines uh, wherever you want if you think that it uh, improves uh, the readability of the program. And comments uh, are welcome and uh, can be used uh, at will. And finally, I'd like to say that this is not a great way to write uh, hack code. Uh, there are better ways to uh, uh, to write uh, code with uh, less numbers and more uh, symbols, and this is something that we'll do uh, later on in the course. Once again, for now, I just want you to, uh, to see an example of, uh, of a typical hack program. And um, if we want to run this program on the computer, we first of all must translate it into binary code. So we have either a human assembler or a, a computer program that translates from one uh, to the other, once the program is expressed in uh, binary code, we can actually load it into the computer and, and execute it, and the program will hopefully do something useful. If not, we can go back, debug the program, recompile it or reassemble it, uh, rerun it, and so on, until uh, we are satisfied uh, with it. So this has been uh, um, 
the last uh, unit in which we, uh, we talked about uh, uh, the HEC uh, machine language. And in the next unit, we are going to, uh, to talk about how we can use this language to control uh, input output devices which are connected to this uh, uh, to the hack computer.